Hello, in this video we're going to go over these two problems. The first problem is prove that the product of every n consecutive integers is divisible by n factorial. And the second problem is prove that the product of every n consecutive odd integers multiplied by 2 to the power of n minus 1 is divisible by n factorial. At this point you may want to pause the video, think about this problem, and come back watch the solution when you are ready. Okay, I'll provide you with two solutions for the first problem and then one, for one solution for the second problem. So let's look at the first problem. The first problem tells us that the product of every n consecutive integers is divisible by n factorial. If these integers are negative, then we can ne factor a negative sign from each one of them and get a product of positive numbers. So if they are negative a, negative a minus 1, all the way to negative a minus n minus 1, which are n consecutive integers. We can factor a negative sign from every one of them, and we will get a product of n positive integers. And it is enough to, for us to show that this product is divisible by n factorial. If they start from a negative number and they end up with a positive number, then there is a zero somewhere in the middle, and zero is, of course, divisible by n factorial. So in other words, I only need to worry about the case when all of them are positive. So here are the two solutions that we're going to propose. The first solution is this. Let's look at the product of a, a plus 1, all the way to a plus n minus 1. If you divide that by n factorial, I will have to show this is in fact an integer. I'm assuming that a is a positive number. I'm going to turn everything into factorials. So I will write it down as 1, 2, all the way to a plus n minus 1. But I have to divide by the product of 1, 2, all the way to a minus 1 times n factorial. The numerator is a plus n minus 1 factorial. The denominator is a minus 1 factorial times n factorial. And this is of course very very familiar. It is a plus n minus 1, choose a minus 1, which of course is an integer. So this is solution number one. So here is solution number two. Solution number two is going to create a recursion for this term that we are given and then use the fact that uh, use induction. So if we call that a of a comma n, the product of a, a plus 1, all the way to a plus n minus 1 over n factorial, we are going to go ahead and find a recursion for this. So we're going to evaluate a of a comma n plus 1. This is going to be a, a plus 1, all the way to a plus n minus 1 times a plus n, divided by n plus 1 factorial. Now, I'm going to distribute that into the second parentheses. Although I'm going to write down the parentheses as a minus 1 plus n plus 1, because that creates a product of a minus 1, a all the way to a plus n minus 1. So let's see what happens. We get a, a plus 1, a plus n minus 1 times a minus 1 plus a, a plus 1 all the way to a plus n minus 1 times n plus 1, all of that divided by n plus 1 factorial. The first fraction, the ratio of product of a all the way to a plus n minus 1 times a minus 1 can be written as a of a minus 1 comma n plus 1 plus the second ratio we can cancel n plus 1 and we will get a a plus 1 all the way to a plus n minus 1 divided by n factorial, which gives us a of a minus 1 comma n plus 1 plus a of a comma n. Okay, so I want to be a little bit careful, so I would have to make sure that a is in fact at least 1. So a of a comma n plus 1 is equal to a of a minus 1 comma n plus 1 plus a of a comma n for all a and n greater than or equal to 1. Now I'm going to employ induction. But because I need to reduce both a and n, so here a is reduced, here n is reduced. 
I would need to use induction on the sum of a plus n. So first of all, if I look at a equals 0, a of a, which is 0 comma n, this is always 0. So this is, of course, an integer. Now, basis step would be this. If a plus n equals 2, that would be the smallest value, then a would be 1, n would be 1, which would mean I am looking at 1 over 1 factorial, which is 1, which is an integer. So that's our basis step. Now we're looking at the inductive step. If we look at this equality that we found here, we know that a minus 1 plus n plus 1 is less than a plus n minus n plus 1, which would mean by inductive hypothesis, a of a minus 1 comma n plus 1 is an integer. Now similarly, a plus n is also less than a plus n plus 1, which would mean a of a comma n is also an integer. And if we add these by the recursion that we got, a of a comma n plus n would have to be an integer by inductive hypothesis and the recursion. So we found the recursion here, and this recursion is what I'm using. Okay, so that was the first problem. Now let's look at the second problem. The second problem is product of n consecutive odd integers multiplied by 2 to the power of n minus 1. So what does that mean? It means something like this. If you take 1, 3, 5, 7, these are 4 consecutive odd integers, multiplied by 2 to the power of 4 minus 1, divided by 4 factorial, this would be an integer. We could also start from a negative number. So negative 3, negative 1, 3, 1 multiplied by 2 cubed divided by 4 factorial. So in this case, unfortunately, we cannot factor all the negative signs and get something similar. So it would be a little bit more complicated. So we can't really use the factorial method, at least not as far as I can see. There might be ways to do that using the first method. But we can use the second method. So here is now how we're going to deal with that. So let's just start from an odd number. So let a be odd and n be a positive integer. Now a could be negative, a could be positive, and this would work for every a. So let's call this one a of a comma n. So similar to what we had, a times a plus 2 all the way to a plus 2n minus 2 divided by n factorial, and of course they also told us to multiply that by 2 to the power of n minus 1. Now we are going to find a recursion for this one. For small values of a, this is not very difficult to see. It is in fact an integer for small values of a and n. So what we're going to do is we're going to find a recursion. a comma n plus 1 is going to be a, a plus 2, a plus 2n minus 2, a plus 2n, 2 to the power of n divided by n plus 1 factorial. Now I'm going to write this down as a minus 2 plus 2n plus 2. And let's distribute to see what we get. We get a minus 2, a, a plus 2, all the way to a plus 2n minus 2 multiplied by 2 to the power of n plus a a plus 2 all the way to a plus 2n minus 2 2n plus 2 and then we need 2 to the power of n all of that divided by n plus 1 factorial now the first fraction right here this is going to be a of a minus 2 comma n plus 1 plus the second fraction I can cancel n plus 1 so I'll, I'm going to write it down as a a plus 2 all the way to a plus 2 n minus 2 times 2 n plus 1 to the power of n over n plus 1 times n factorial n plus 1 cancels 
and we are left with a of a minus 2n plus 1 plus 4 times a of a comma n. So we are going to take away from 2 to the power of n minus 1, we're going to take away a 2. With the, the existing 2, we get 4, and the rest would be a of a comma n. So here's what we get. We get. The recursion is a of a comma n plus 1 is equal to a of a minus 2 comma n plus 1 plus 4 a of a comma n. Now, we're going to now use this and prove the statement, the claim by induction on a plus n. So suppose for now that a is positive. So we're going to use induction on a plus n. Okay, so the smallest value of a is 1. The smallest value of n is 1 also. So if a plus n equal to 2, which is the smallest possible value, a is 1, n is 1. So what we have is 1 times 2 to the power of 0 over 1 factorial. Of course, this is an integer. Now, if we look at the case when a is 1, when we use the recursion, this guy becomes negative 1. And we are not going to, into the negative territory. So we'll better uh, deal with the case when a is 1 separately. So if a is 1, what we get is this. We get 1, 3, all the way to 2n minus 1 times 2 to the power of n minus 1 divided by n factorial. And I'll have to make sure that this is in fact an integer. This isn't very difficult to see. I'm going to rewrite this in terms of factorials. This is 2n minus 1 factorial times 2 to the power of n minus 1 divided by 2, 4 all the way to 2n minus 2 times n factorial. At the bottom I can factor a 2 from each one of these terms. I will get 2 to the power of n minus 1 times n minus 1 factorial and then times n factorial. This is going to be 2n minus 1 choose n which is in fact an integer. So what does that mean? It means a of 1 comma n is an integer for every n. Okay so now going back to the recursion which was a of a comma n plus 1 equals a of a minus 2 comma n plus 1 plus a of a comma n which is the integer that I, uh, the recursion that I had and there was a factor there was a coefficient of 4 here now I can use inductive hypothesis if a is 1 I'm done I have proved it if a is more than 1 then what I can do is I can say a minus 2 plus n plus 1 is less than a plus n plus 1 and a plus n is less than a plus n plus 1. So what does that mean? It means by the inductive hypothesis a of a minus 2 comma n plus 1 and a of a comma n are both integers. Therefore a of a comma n plus 1 is also an integer. And this proves the claim for all a that are positive. Now, in order to prove the claim for a that are negative, we'll have to do the in, uh, induction in reverse. So I'll have to rewrite the recursion as a of a, a minus 2 n plus 1 as a of a comma n plus 1. I'm evaluating a of a minus 2 comma n plus 1 from this equation. So it would be that minus 4 a of a comma n. Now I know both of these are integers by inductive hypothesis. I'm doing an induction in reverse. So I'm going from a to a minus 2. It's basically induction on negative a. If it is true for negative a, I'll have to prove it for negative a plus 2, which is more than negative a. And I know that both of these are integers, therefore their left hand side would also be an integer. And that completes the solution. Now I would challenge you to think about what you can come up with using a similar strategy and not only multiplying odds or consecutive, multiply multiples of 3 plus 1, multiples of 3 plus 2, 
multiples of 7 plus 3 and see what kinds of um, facts you can come up with. You can come up with some interesting facts in with that. So if you like this video, feel free to check out the rest of the videos on my channel. I have a lot of videos like this on my channel going either over some interesting problems or some interesting topics that are used in problem solving and math competitions. So I will see you in the next video.